Yep, we're all good. Okay, cool. Hello, everybody. Well, thanks for joining us from across many, many different time zones. Um, uh, we have here is um, uh, Dr. Carmine Gentel. I hope I'm really hoping I'm pronouncing your name right. Uh, and then and then Bill Hartley, which a lot of you guys already know. He's a 3D Hills community manager um, and been to many other conferences uh, with us before. So we're here today because we have a very exciting event that's coming up in Sydney, Australia, even though it's really a global conference since we have many international speakers in the conference. So um, Carmine, would you like to tell us, uh, well, introduce yourself first and tell us who you are um, and you know what your research uh, and work focuses on. Thank you so much, Jenny, for the kind invite and for the opportunity to present, to talk about the event and share it with, um, within your network as well. So my, about myself, I'm a lecturer at the University of Technology Sydney and a, a senior lecturer at the University of Technology Sydney that is equal to an assistant professor for um, the American audience. And by the way, good afternoon, uh, US, a good evening. So I've been, uh, so my research here at, at the University of Technology Sydney or simply UTS is focusing on 3D bioprinting heart tissues for in vitro and in vivo applications. So now um, we work within a multidisciplinary team comprising scientists uh, with expertise in biomaterials, uh, stem cell technologies, and, and bi 3D bioprinting technology, obviously, together also with a clinical team, including clinicians such as cardiologists and cardiac surgeons here in Australia and overseas. Now, we also partner with industry, um, we have industry partners uh, here in Australia and globally. And uh, we are really, really excited about the fact that this year's event that you are gonna talk about today is basically allowing the opportunity also for our um, industry partners to present within the conference. So the, the event is basically um, the second uh, workshop, which was which is following the one that we organized last year mm -hmm. here in Sydney. Last year was a face-to-face -face event, and it was a huge success for us, based on the fact that the um, the Australian community focusing on 3D bioprinting may be smaller compared to the huge network generated in the US or in Europe. Nevertheless. Uh, we had a huge support from international speakers um, last year as well mm -hmm. that uh, led us to basically organize a second event. Now, let's say thanks to COVID, the thanks to the pandemic, we, be, we are all more exposed to these virtual uh, conferences and so on. So we took the opportunity to basically try to expand the, uh, the exposure of what is the... Um, the reality about bioprinting here in Australia to everybody around the, the globe, uh, the world. Now, in, in order to do this, what we have tried to do is try to um, uh, liaise within our um, Australian network. So within our program this year, we have different speakers uh, from Australia, but also others that are, um, are well known worldwide, such as our keynote speaker, uh, Dr. Vladimir Mironov. That is actually um, acquiring a lot of interest globally based on the fact that he's talking about 3D bioprinting yeah, in space. Yes. Now, from the point of view of the um, uh, industry partners, that they became actually, actually sponsors for the event, and they will have the uh, opportunity to interact with the participants uh, through the platform that we are using, WOVA. Basically, we, we, we've been very excited about securing a diamond sponsor such as Sendlink, mm -hmm. uh, that is a global um, leader in, in the field of 3D bioprinting, together with other um, huge um, companies such as uh, Regima 3D, um, our partner for many, many years, and that is our platinum uh, sponsor and other gold sponsors such as uh, Fluicel and, and so on. Mm -hmm. 
So all of the the uh, the the sponsors and the speakers are available through our through our, through our website. So I would encourage encourage um, all of you guys to register through the website, which is free for everyone, and basically enjoy the meeting in a couple of days' time. Yeah, I I think um, I want to talk a little bit about the organization of the event because I'm looking at the agenda right now, and uh, there is definitely a logic behind how you organize the speakers and topics around it. And you mentioned the sponsors and, and, and then we also had a discussion about it. It's not just about sponsorship. It's actually about how to connect the academic people with the commercial side so they can have intellectual conversations to see how they grow the field together. Um, so would you like to expand on how you curated this agenda? Like what is your thinking behind how to put who who in what category and why do you do that? Of course. So just to um, summarize briefly, the majority of the speakers are people that we we already um, collaborate with. So that was quite straightforward, and including Professor Gordon Wallace and others in the in the in the in the program. Nevertheless, um, Australia. Uh, from the US looks like a small island. Never, in reality, it is a huge country. And it feels it's like so kind of, <laughs> we feel kind of isolated in our own bubble, if you want. And I thought that it was okay to reach out to the different experts uh, in bioprinting here in Australia. And then and I asked about whether they were interested in presenting, sharing their uh, experience, trying to network with, um, with others, including companies, as you just pointed out. So it's based on the fact that we, we really feel isolated at times. And based on the fact that within the world of 3D bioprinting, we all know that nowadays you may end up focusing on one side, on one aspect of the, of the field you may find somebody that is really focused on the biomaterial side, whereas somebody else may be working on more on the, um, on the bioengineering side, including the, uh, the, the bioprinter and the bio ink development and so on. So really, this is an opportunity for many of us to basically try to understand what is available within Australia and potentially outside of Australia to basically try to create new networks, new collaborations, and so on. Mm -hmm. So this is how it, it all started. It is based yeah. on the, um, a pre the previous experience from last year. Some of, the, some of the speakers are actually from the program from last year as well. Nevertheless, we, we were able to expand more beyond the, the program from last year, which was a first trial for us as well. Now this year we have new additional sec sessions about, for instance, uh, patentability of bioprinted products, uh, commercialization pathways, future directions, and so on. So, and including also the opportunity for um, clinicians and experts from pharmaceutical companies to basically try to understand why as, a three, as an expert in 3D bioprinting would, would I approach a clinician or somebody from an in vitro on a pharmaceutical company, for instance, if I have my specific product. So this is really an opportunity for all of us to, to liaise and keep in mind that Australia is, is a very relaxed uh, environment. So we try to make sure that we all come together into this event as colleagues, but also as potential friends in a way that we are able to discuss and present what um, we are able to achieve nowadays and potentially brainstorm on new potential ideas and so on. Yeah, well, I am absolutely excited about who's speaking at the conference, but I didn't even know about this conference until Bill was telling me how great this was last year. And he's like so excited about it this year because it sounds like it's getting even better. So I, I want I want, to, I want to shift the microphone to Bill just for a few seconds. What's your impression last year as a student? Because you're year three PhD uh, degree, or what year are you now? 
Um, at okay. just over a year. So I was pretty much just at the start of my PhD when I attended uh, Carmine's first event in Sydney. And, you know, just okay. leading into this field, you know, just exploring the possibilities of 3D printing and bioprinting, it was really a great event, you know, really sort of opened my eyes to what's available, who's working on these particular topics and the institutions that they belong to. But more the fact that, you know, the event itself could bring people working on these similar topics and trying to achieve similar goals. So I really feel like, you know, trying to do this a second time, particularly with a digital platform, a lot of people are working on the same object. So if we can, uh, same target or same goal. So if we can bring people together just one day, start a few conversations and really get some projects kicking off from this. So are you as a student, how does it help you? You know, with your degree, does it help you? Yeah career or your research? Absolutely. I think the experience, you know, just networking, just really just finding out who's in the field and not just from an academic standpoint as well. Like, you know, from, from me being a PhD student, you know, I'm always thinking about the future, the next step, what I should do and, you know, potentially what career paths I can take from attending these events. And, you know, getting these companies to do uh, presentations, specifically like application study examples uh, within this field is really useful because, for a PhD student, it allows me to sort of uh, gather these skills that I might actually need to transfer to a company with a complete set of skills. So I'm not missing that in the gap. Awesome. Yeah, like I said, uh, Carmine, I I don't know any of, well, almost, I would say I know, I mean, I've heard of some names obviously, but I probably know 10% of the people who are presenting at the conference this year. So. Would you like to just give us some highlights on the speakers, who they are, and I mean, any new publications that they're going to reveal? Absolutely. You know? So um, regarding a few of the speakers that confirmed from last year as well, we have Professor Tony Weiss. He is um, the elect president of the Thermis, the Teaching and Regional Medicine International Society. So last year he talked about ice uh, printing. This year he's talking about uh, his um, latest um, publication, and that is work is focusing on the the development of um, bio inks for vascularized uh, soft tissues using elastin, tropo elastin. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the, the 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 talks that he's talking about the latest publications. We, we do have some of the speakers that I haven't confirmed yet the details of their talks. Nevertheless, um, we're really excited about the fact that um, Dr. Vladimir Mironov, who used to be my supervisor when I was based in the US many, many years ago, he's talking about nowadays about 3D bioprinting in space. He's one of, actually one of the fathers of 3D bioprinting technology. And other speakers include obviously Professor Gordon Wallace. He's a worldwide known expert in bioprinting, focusing on different biomaterials, bio inks development, and including different aspects of bioprinting. And based on the fact that he's many, many, many collaborations throughout the, the world. Other uh, new speakers that I would like to point out um, include, as I mentioned to you, uh, the speakers that uh, will talk about the um, commercialization pathways. I think this is a great opportunity for many of us that are looking into how to take our technology to the next step based on the fact that we do know that there is quite little nowadays available for the, um, for the required uh, steps that we need to um, follow up on for the commercialization of the 3D bioprinted product and so on. So we also know, we do know that this may change from country to country based on the different regulations, FDA, uh, European Union and so on. So it's really important that there is a, a big um, understand, a better understanding of what is that the, the opportunity for us as scientists to, to follow up on this, on this path. Then also we have the addition of um, clinicians, as I said, Professor Pro Pro Peter Chung from Melbourne will talk about, uh, from his point of view, how the um, a clinician would think, even think about liaising with a scientist to, to utilize and to transplant a 3D bioprinted product into a patient. This is a really, really interesting point based on the fact that 
eventually the, the product that we would like to transplant into a patient will be done basically by the clinician. So it's really important that we are able to, to better understand how to, um, to create this uh, re relationship with the clinician so that we can follow through the different um, preclinical and clinical uh, studies to allow the, 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 the product to be transplanted and delivered to our patient. So there are different aspects of the, pro of the program that are really, really appealing. I think it's really important that people uh, they have a quick look at the program. So these, the, um, the platform uh, WOVA allows you guys to basically follow the whole link, they follow the whole program through uh, the whole uh, event throughout the day. We will, we, will pre, um, we will record it. Basically, we'll be making sure that it's going to be shared with everyone. Understandably, uh, we all live in different parts of this world. Um, so far, we, we had registrations from everywhere. We had re registrations from the US, uh, Europe, Asia, Australia, and we're really, really excited about providing this opportunity to everyone. Now, um, as I mentioned to you guys at the beginning, the, um, the sponsors and especially the companies will be presenting a part of the, they will showcase basically their technologies and so on, but they will also have the opportunity to um, directly interact with the um, participants that are maybe in just interested in exploring a different platform or um, different technology and so on directly through the same website. So the um, WOVA uh, basically allows the, um, the participants to either directly uh, follow the, the event or there is an additional tab for the exhibitors where basically all the sponsors will be, uh, will be pro able to provide additional information and um, reference for future um, communication and so on. So I'm looking at the time of this uh, conference and we're almost up for this interview as well. Uh, but uh, what, day, what time of the day would that be for the Northern American audience? Oh, that's a good I'm question. Be, uh, <laughs> so right now, <laughs> yeah, it's always a, a thought, it's like definitely um, a thought uh, thinking game for me because you guys are like 15 hours ahead of me so this is supposed to be happening october 8th uh what, right. what time of the day again so it starts at 8 30 a.m in okay. sydney time so um, my i guess that 8 the 8th of october here would be 7th of october for you guys and yeah. then depending on where about you're located in the united states you will be able to schedule a, a certain so time around like noon time to evening all the way until evening so it's actually not bad timing for us i we would say so drinking a glass of wine or on our peloton bike while listening to world-class scientists I, I would i would definitely do that <laughs> <How about you? laughs> it, it becomes a little bit more challenging for europeans uh, for instance one of the speakers um, dr Lyudmila polonchuk will have a, um, an early rise <laughs> to present <laughs> uh, live on the day. Mm -hmm. But I, I would say that uh, for Americans, it, it is quite uh, easy for you guys to follow. Yeah. It. Plus, we're all quarantined at home right now. So what else can I do? I agree. Nothing else, just learning. <laughs> so anyways, thanks so much for, for this uh, short interview. One quick last question. What is your background? Is that a card a myocyte? In the background, so what the Your the background. image is showing is um mean we call it mini hearts. So this is a um, okay. cardiac spheroid generated by the co-culture of different cardiac cells. So you see different colors: the red co the red cells, the red color stains, the um, muscle cells that we put together from stem cells into our mini hearts. Then uh, green and blue are basically the other vascular cells. Okay. So basically, this image is showing how uh, the the how the different cells that we bring together in our mini hearts organize. So what we have done in the previous years was basically understanding how to better replicate a piece of heart in a petri dish yeah. by co-culturing 
the same cells that are found in the in a heart of a patient by using stem cells from the same patient. And so this is what the background is showing now. Cool. I'm so excited to listen to your talk soon. Well, thank, thank you, you so much again, uh, Carmine and Bill for joining us and uh, hopefully see you soon. Thank you. Good luck. See you. Have okay. a nice evening. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.